Funding for the interview show is provided by Field Notes, vintage styled, made in the USA pocket journals and stationery products. Learn more at FieldNotesBrand.com. She leads the punk band against me and has a new album out called Bot to Rot. Here to talk and perform is Laura Jane Grace. So, so talk about the new the new record in specific. This is it's a solo record, so it's not with Against Me. You're not done with Against Me, but it's a it's a break from it, and it's the first one on Bloodshot, which is a big Chicago label here. Right. So, but I don't think you started making the music for Bloodshot. So take us back to when you were writing the songs and and kind of where you were at and what you wanted to get out of yourself. Sure. Um, so I've been living in Chicago for like five years now. And um, I haven't, I'm never really home. I, I tour a lot. So uh, this past year, though, I have been to home a lot and I uh, started working on a record I like to write and um, was working on the record with Adam, who plays with me and against, and against me, and with Mark, who is our front of house and tour manager. And he's an excellent bass player. And he was started playing bass when we were messing around with songs. And we just kept getting together like every two weeks. And after about six, seven months, we realized we had a record worth of songs. Um, so I just became really determined that I wanted to get the record out before the end of the year. And I had this feeling of like, like, you know, when you buy like fruits or vegetables from the grocery store and you get them and then they just sit there and they rot and they go bad. <laughs> yes. And you had this thing that had all of this goodness in it and it could have been good for you, but you just wasted it. That's so why I just buy processed food. <laughs> <laughs> Right on. Well, <laughs> let's see how that works out for you. <laughs> but yeah, that's the idea, you know? And what are the songs about? Um, I don't know. They're, a lot, they're about a lot of things. I, a lot of them are about traveling. Uh, I have one song on the record called Amsterdam Hotel, and then there's another song called The Hotel Song that was also written in an Amsterdam hotel room. Uh, not the same one, yeah. but yeah. And, and, and there's a song, I Hate Chicago. There is a song called right. I Hate Chicago. All right, bring it on. I, was try, I didn't want to bring that up. Well, I was hoping you wouldn't you knew bring I it up. Would. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, <laughs> it's tongue in cheek, though, right? It's, it sure. It really means I love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you like the uh, Hibarito sandwiches? I've never had a Hibarito sandwich, <laughs> okay. so I don't know. Maybe I'll write another song. Yeah, yeah. I love, I love some things about Chicago. <laughs> the sandwiches are okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not so much the pizza. <laughs> I grew up in Italy. Did you really? I did. All right, let's talk. Like, so here's, here's, the, here's the problem with interviewing you, which is that there are some people who know everything about your life, and I don't want to do interview 101. But then there's other people who don't know anything. Right. So, so I have to kind of, I'm just talking about my difficulties here, but I want to just <laughs> thread the middle. So why were you in Italy growing up? You were a military I, I'm a military brat, yeah. Okay, uh -huh. and then when did you, when did you come back to, to the States? When I was 12. Okay, and then you settled where? In Florida. Okay, uh, in? South Florida. Okay. I, I, I moved there because my grandmother lived there. Okay, so. and, and then when, when, is that around the time that, that music started to play a part in your life? I knew from like when I was eight years old, like that's when I started playing guitar. I, I had no doubt in my mind I wanted to be a musician, I wanted to be in a band. I started taking guitar lessons from an army wife and uh, ordered my first guitar out of Sears catalog. I saved money mowing grasses uh, to, to order a guitar and then took Did it from there. Did you grow up in there. the 1950s? <laughs> <laughs> what were your first songs like? Uh, like first songs that I learned? That you wrote? Uh, the very first song I ever wrote was a song about the Little Mermaid called Ariel. Because I was with my band at the time, we were called the Black Shadows. And, um, and we were like, we need a song, we need to write something. So there was like this, this little kid, this little girl who was there where we were practicing and we were like, what should we write a song about? And she was like, the Little Mermaid. So we wrote a song about the Little Mermaid. That was my very first song. Was it a good song? No. <laughs> But that's okay. I tell that to people all the time, though. Like, if you're a musician or an artist or you want to write, is that everyone thinks they suck all the time, no matter how long you've been doing. Even now. Yes. When did when did punk music become the music that that you gravitated toward? Um, probably when I was like 13, 14 years old. I uh, 
I started getting beat up a lot in school. I would get beat up by the cops. I was I was arrested for obstruction of justice. I wanted to say I was convicted of obstruction of justice. Yeah, <laughs> when Gusto was talking for, for about doing, that earlier. For doing what? Uh, a cop told me to get on the ground, and I said what? And then they arrested me. Really? Mm -hmm. And then and you were convicted? I was convicted of uh, a re resisting arrest without violence and of obstruction of justice. And then what did that ultimately mean for you? That uh, meant that I had a lot of trouble getting into Canada until I got a letter of criminal rehabilitation. Really? I had a couple other. What if you wanted to apply to work at like a, at like a bagel shop? Do you I have mean, to write down that you were, you, I, ha you don't. Yeah, I, I also, like I dropped out of high school when I was like 16. I, I wasn't about working at a bagel shop or anything yeah, right, like right. that. So. <laughs> well, you don't need a high school degree to work at a bagel shop. Right, right on, but, right on. Um, so, okay, so, so, is the first time you played punk in against me? Did you, was that your first band? No, or? I had a bunch of like local bands local. down in Naples, Florida. And then when did you know that Against Me was going to be the thing that that you stuck with? I started Against Me as a bedroom project when I was 17 years old. Just my mother had got me a four track cassette recorder as a Christmas gift, and I had an acoustic guitar. So I set a goal for myself of recording 10 songs in about like two weeks, and I did it. And then I like dubbed the cassette tapes myself and gave them out to friends, photocopied inserts at Kinko's, and then set a goal of like, I want to play one show by myself. And this was just like me and an acoustic guitar, and that was terrifying to me. Yeah. And so I did that, and I accomplished that goal. And then I was like, it kind of sucks playing music alone. I want to play music with friends. And then I wanted to build it into a band. And it just kept going from there. As the band got bigger and it started to gain a following, What's and, and like what's the feeling like of of knowing that people are latching on to what you're saying and that like what's the feeling of performing live like what what is like you said that you wanted to perform in front of people mm -hmm. and you, that that was what was fun but a community kind of rose up around the band like is there anything else in life that feels like that for you um no I mean it's it's a high you know it's really addictive like. Uh, but uh, I, for me, there was always a disconnect too. You know, I didn't come out as transgender until I was like 32. So for most of my career, I always felt like I was writing songs and saying things that people were misinterpreting them. And there was always this like thing surrounding my band about whatever record label we were on. And there was always a backlash around it about whether or not we had sold out or whether or not we were keeping Sire it real. Records yeah. And every people, some, not everybody, but some, which seems, does that still happen? Like, it seems like we've, the, because of what happened to the music industry and because people just have different things to worry about, the idea of selling out for signing for Sire Records is not a concern on that many people's minds anymore. But people right. were pissed. Yeah, I mean, we were like physically attacked. We had our bands like tires slashed, like people pour bleach on our merch at shows. Like, would but that it, it's a today? punk thing, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, the landscape has definitely changed, as you said, and, like, we really got in at the tail end of, like, we we had that dream of, like, a record label comes and they're, like, million-dollar contract, you know? Like, that just doesn't happen anymore. So we, like, that was, like, the tail end of that period of time in the major label world. And there aren't really, like, rock bands that get those deals anymore or, like, have that kind of moral dilemma or whatever. Yeah. So talk about the... To go back to the disconnect you felt, mm -hmm. was it a disconnect with the audience? Was it a disconnect with the music? Was it a disconnect with yourself? All of all three of those things. And how did you? Obviously, you transitioned, but how did you get to the point where you felt that I'm comfortable with who I am, who my audience is, and the songs that I'm writing? Um, that's a lot. Um, yeah. I mean, the music, the music wasn't a disconnect. You know, it's like it's punk rock. It's three chords. You know, I was doing it right. Yeah. Um, lyrically, I felt like people were definitely not understanding what I was saying for a really long time. Um, because but, you, you could, because the messages weren't direct enough, or because I think people thought I was speaking metaphorically, but I wasn't speaking metaphorically yeah, yeah, yeah. oftentimes. You know, like there's one song that had the lyric, "If I could have chosen, I would have been born a woman." Like, there's no metaphor about that when you're trans. <laughs> you know, it was like, just this, it's he here. <laughs> it's right there. What do they mean by that? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, hello. You know, like, but so there was like that disconnect. But, you know, coming out and being honest and just, you know, growing up, that really helped. You know, you just like reach a point of abandon where you like, you're either going to kill yourself or you're just going to be yourself. And I chose to be myself. Yeah. 
has the what music means to you now? Is it different than what it meant to you when you were 17? Not at all. You know, like music is the way I communicate with the world, and I feel much better like communicating by writing a song than I do having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Like How does I don't that make know. You feel? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is weird. This is like some strange form of psychotherapy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That'll be seventy-five dollars. <laughs> well, do you want to play a song? I'll play a song. Yeah. To take, to take us out of the show. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Laura Jane Grace, everybody. Thank you. You make me walk away from the hate I carry. Same page, same ways, so effortlessly I'll put faith in you if you put faith in me If you want it, it could be that easy On top of the world, at the end of the world with you Don't ever hold back what you're saying to me Just have here and now on the same of a soul.